And in this tutorial, I'll quickly go through four of the animation cycles we'll be putting into Unity for a character to walk around um, or to move around with. Uh, so here is the original um, finished rig file. So there's no animation yet. He's completely rigged, finished, uh, skin's been binded and painted with weights. Uh, so everything's good to go. If I were to grab a piece, um, let's say his hips, he should be able to move around nice and clean. Uh, you might want to lock the mesh so you don't accidentally grab that. I can lock it there. So now I can only grab the controls that makes it a little bit easier for animation. Um, you want to make sure you test this in Unity first. So just grab everything. Uh, you don't need the joints turned on, but you need, do need the mesh. So you grab everything, go to File, Export Selection, and Export out in FBX, uh, and put it in Unity. Make sure everything looks right. If it looks right, then you're good to go. You're ready for animation. All right, so when you're ready to animate, and everything looks fine so far. You want to start with this original rig file and you want to create your animation using this file and then when you're done save it as whatever you made, let's say the walk cycle. Then close the walk cycle and reopen this original file before any changes were made with the animation and start your jump cycle. And then save it as a jump cycle, don't save it as the rig file. Um, this way you can always keep coming back to the original one before you put animation on it. You could put all the animation in the same timeline but it's sometimes easier to keep separate animation files so you have less keyframes to worry about. Um, so yeah, just keep the same rig file and everything comes from that. So uh, make your animation, save it as a different file, and then come back to this original file. Alright, so all that being said, um, we're going to make four different animations. We're going to make a walk cycle so we can walk around, or we could do a run cycle. Uh, we're going to make an idle, so he's just going to stand there moving around doing whatever. Uh, we're going to create a jump animation so we can jump up into the air. And then we're going to do one action. So whether you want that to be like a sword swing, a punch, a pick up an item, um, some kind of action move. He jumps around in surprise, like oh my gosh, um, some kind of action. Alright, so those are the four we're going to work on. Uh, so here's the original file, and in order to animate, you have all these controls that you can now move your character around wherever he's going to go. Uh, the cloak, it, that's going to be Unity Physics, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, for the first step, we want to make sure our timeline is set to frame number one. We want to select everything. Uh, you don't need the mesh though, so let's unreference or reference the mesh so you can't grab it. All right, so we have this, and that's on its own layer. If you don't have one of these, you can grab every grab the mesh and create a layer for it, and it locks it. All right, so we're going to go to frame one and press S on the keyboard, and that'll key everything. You might have noticed that this turned red. So if I click on any of these parts, everything turned red. S keys everything. Um, so we don't really want to key every attribute all the time, so that's just um, the first step on frame one, just so something has a key. And then depending on what the cycle is, we're going to want it to loop into a, a repeating cycle. So actually, before we um, move off of frame one, Let's position the character the way we want it. Uh, let's also set auto key turned on. So that's this little blue, uh, this little circle thing. If you put this on so it turns blue, uh, this will allow you to, any change you make will automatically save into the computer so you don't have to manually press anything. So there's no more pressing S, there's no more keying any of these. It'll automatically make all your changes for you. Um, if you wanted to make a change, just change the number, press enter, and that number now is changed. Uh, so let's move him into whatever position. Let's say he's going to go into an idle position. So let's say I want his legs to be a little bit closer. So I pull those in for the idle. Boom. Um, and the hips are probably fine. Let's bring in the hands a little bit. So pull that down there. I can rotate the hand. And let's grab that hand, rotate it in, and move it down there. Maybe move this hand a little, up a little bit more so it looks a little more natural. And that one up a little bit too. Cool. Alright, so something close enough to that. So that's frame number one. Uh, since auto key was turned on, everything that I made change, or stays in that position. So if I scroll to any of the other uh, keys, it won't make a difference. Um, so if you want to position it first, that's fine too. You just grab everything and then press S on key frame one. It's already keyed. Alright, so now. Uh, let's say it's idle. I'm going to make the idle last for, I don't know, 100 frames. So I click on this number right here uh, and set it to 100. So now I have a 100, actually says 48. Uh, it's always showing me 48 of the 100. It's the corresponds to this window wall, so I can click this box and pull it out. So now I have showing 100 
of the 100 frames. So on frame 100, let's say, actually, let's make this 101. Let's go one more frame. So on frame 101, I'm going to press, select everything and press S again. So frame number one is the exact same frame as frame 100. One is 100 to one. The exact same thing, nothing changes between them. The red mark shows that it's been keyed. So now I'm going to push this back to 100. So now I can't go to 101, so it's like no more changing it. Everything should be the same. So now anywhere in between here that I make changes, let's say on frame 40, I move his hips kind of down a little bit. Uh, frame, let's say 78, I move them up a little bit. So now he should have some breathing motion in there, kind of a little slow. And you can see how everything works. So any change I make at any point, let's say on frame 28, I take his hand, I move his sword hand out to here. And so now he should be slowly moving his hand uh, back and forth. Let's say on frame 60, I have his head turning over to here. And then press play. So I can kind of see all the time. So it looks like he's kind of idling like this. So however you want to make the idle, this isn't the best example of an idle, but um, just kind of move your parts around like that. And that's how everything works. Just auto keys turned on, everything you move and change uh, should work just fine. Um, and then your eye controls also, if you want to have him look around different sides, I probably should have put textures on before this so I can kind of see the eyes. All right, so all that's good to go. Uh, the next thing, um, let me show you an example of one of the idols that is finished. So this was, actually this is the attack, uh, idol. All right, so this one's a, more of a finished idol. So he's kind of moving a little bit. He's, he's got his foot's tapping a little bit. He's kind of moving slightly up and down, his sword hand kind of gripping a little bit. He's kind of turning left and right, his other hand kind of like flexing his fingers. So a little bit more of a kind of a realistic idol. Uh, you can play around with that and kind of maybe he's tapping a sword on the ground or something. Uh, something that shows that he's moving a little bit. And that's the same method we just did before, just kind of moving things around. All right, jumping over to let's say the attack animation. So on the attack animation, this is what I have for the attack. Kind of a simple uh, motion. Let's say we grab his hand. I have a couple different keys here. So he's got to swing upwards to about here. And then he's going to actually go about here. And then each key is kind of breaking it apart to get him into a position. Um, so every time I made a change, it recorded a red mark. Uh, let's say his hips are going to be moving a little bit. So from here, his hips have turned that way a little bit. And now they've turned out this way. Um, so anything that moves got keyed. If I click on everything, you can kind of see there's a bunch of keys down here. This one I only made about 22 frames, so that way it's a quick attack. He doesn't need 100 frames to perform the attack as something quick. Uh, so once this one's done, you can go through, select everything, including the mesh, and export out. Let me cover exporting real quick. So unreference the rush, mesh, grab everything, file, export selection, and this time, uh, what I want to do for the export is I want to make sure animation is being exported. I want to make sure I'm baking the animation, so check mark that as well. And I want to start on frame 1. In this case, I'm ending on frame, looks like 22. So, end on frame 22. And then name it and export out the FBX. And we'll put this into Unity. So, pick the how long your animations are for each of the ones that you're exporting. Make sure animation and baking is turned on. And that should be it for animations. So let's jump over to the next one. Uh, let's go with the attack. I just did the attack. Let's go with the jump. So the jump's going to be a little more tricky. Uh, we're going to create kind of like a jumping effect, but it looks a little weird because he's not really leaving the ground much. We're going to code him leaving the ground in Unity where it's going to actually lift up into the air. Right now we're just doing the positions that he's jumping into. So if I were to, let's say, grab everything, um, you can kind of see what's going to happen. So on frame number one, he's kind of standing here, just like on frame number 22 is the ending position. So 1 to 22 are exact copies. On frame number four, he reaches his lowest position. On frame number six, he reaches his highest position. And nothing changes between there, except his arm's little moving a little bit, but that's fine. So primarily between six and eight, nothing changes. He's going to be holding that position. So this is the part where he's raising into the air. So he's duck down and now he's lifting and the code will start playing at this point forward and he's going to keep floating in the air 
and then as he starts to reach the top, he's going to drift into the floating position. So this is the kick up, and then float. So it's going to stay in this position from 10 to 14, nothing's happening again. It's just holding that position of him floating, and the code will keep it holding longer. Um, and then when he reaches 14 to 16, he's going to be coming back down, and well, I guess 14 to 18 is fine. So 14 to 18, he hits the ground, he squashes, and then 22, he stands back up, and 22 is the same as 1. So we're going to break this animation into three pieces. They're all going to be on the same timeline, we'll just go in Unity and break it into three different programmable uh, states. So 1 to 6 is him ducking, and then the code will say once he's leaving the ground, go to this state, hold this state, and then we're going to say when he touches the ground, play this state. So the code will pick which one of the sequences will occur, but all we need to do is put all those sequences into the animation. So again, just move your frames around to kind of create uh, these effects where you have them kind of bending down by frame 4, lifting by 6, um, uh, holding a floating position by 10 to 14, and then docking back down. You can change these numbers, they don't matter. Uh, they're just whatever I num numbers I picked. Uh, as long as you have something that kind of holds and holds right here and then comes back down. You can get a nice realistic jump in there. All right, and the last one, jump over to the walk cycle. This one's a little more tricky. Uh, so here is a walk. There's a lot of different parts of the body that move when creating a realistic walk cycle, but if you want to do something simple, as long as you have the feet moving and the hips moving and the arms moving, that's the main um, pieces of it. There's a lot of other subtle move motions that move all over the character as well. But on frame number one, let's say, We'll start with the left leg. The frame number one is contacting the ground back here, and the right leg is contacting the ground up here. So on frame one, he's here, and this is a 32 frame cycle, so 33 is a copy of frame number one. So on frame number nine, this foot is passing through. On frame 17, this foot is landed. So from one over to nine over to 17, the foot's made one cycle forward. Then on the way backwards, from 21 it hits the ground, to 25 it's now halfway, by 29 it's starting to lift off the ground, and by 33 it's kind of back where it was back on frame number 1. Then reversing that, same thing, from 1 he hits the ground by 5, 9 it goes back to midway, 13 he starts to lift the ground, well, off the ground a little bit, by 17 he's kind of fully bending, 25 he's passing through, and 33 is back to number one. So those are the leg positions. Uh, you could be slightly off with that, but generally, if you want to have something that looks decently realistic, it would kind of follow that pattern right there. Um, the hips also will change a little bit. By frame number one, it's up at regular height. Uh, you can By frame number five, it's going to be a little bit lower, so he's going to drop down in height a little bit. And then by frame 13, he's going to be the highest he's going to be, so he's raising up. And the reason is ducking is because his foot just landed, and the reason it's stretching upwards is his foot is extending straight back there. Uh, so then he's going to come back down to the, medium, to the middle height, the original uh, zero-ish position. And then he's going to hit back at his lowest on 21. And then he's going to stand back up again on his highest on 29 if the leg stretches forward. And then revert back to his regular position here. So he has a little bit of up and down motion. Uh, and then the arms, so on the left arm, the arms are slightly off center from the legs, which means that by frame five, the arms have reached their farthest out position. And they're gonna start coming backwards and backwards. And by frame 21, the, leg, the arm has reached its farthest back position and will start going forwards again. And the same thing, you just grab the other arm and kind of reverse that. So by five, it's reached its farthest back. By uh, 21, it's reached the farthest forward. And then coming back to about 33 matches with one again. Or I guess 29 is the farthest back. Nope, not yet. Uh, five is the farthest back. And if you want to do other subtle changes, or hips rotations, or head rotations, chest rotations, uh, the way the feet swing in and out, um, there's a lot of subtle things in there. But as long as you have something similar to that, you should have a decent enough looking walk where the 
character's feet are walking, hitting the ground, sliding back, walking, hitting the ground, sliding back. His hips are going up and down, and his arms are swinging back and forth. And so that's uh, what we're aiming for, something to look like his walking. And again, once you're done that, just go select everything, including the mesh, export as frames 1 to 32, because that's the length of the animation. And everything should be a seamless uh, loop cycle. Once all this is done, we'll be putting this into Unity and coding this in the next tutorial. Uh, what it looks like once it's all said and done and coded correctly. You should have a character like this. He should be able to walk around so we can see the walk cycle is now moving and playing. If I stop, he goes into the idle position. And if I start walking again, you can see that he walks around the screen. If I perform the attack button, he'll swing his sword. And if I do the jump, he'll jump into the air. So he goes from the duck um, to lun lunging into the air. His legs are straight for a little bit, then they kind of uh, curl up and wait until he hits the ground and then straightens back out. So those are all the different uh, positions we're going to be working on, just four different ones. So we can walk around and with the cloth physics, the cloth should follow behind if you happen to have cloth in there. That's not the cleanest of physics, um, but for now it should work. And that's what we'll be aiming for in this uh, tutorial.